One form of fishing that's become very popular in recent years is ultralight tackle fishing, otherwise known as LRF, light rock fishing. And for those of you that have never heard of LRF fishing, basically what it is is just going out with ultralight tackle and very, very small lures and literally catching whatever you can, big or small. Now, although I like to do this a couple of times a year, I don't consider myself to be a serious LRF angler. But the time I enjoy it is in the summer when you've got a beautiful summer's day and a calm sea and crystal clear water and then I find it a lot of fun. Now I got those conditions a few days ago so the plan was to go down to the rocks and fish for a while off the rocks and just catch whatever I can but then come in and fish a rock pool going after some of the mini species which is all part of LRF fishing. Now the tackle that I use for this type of fishing, this is an 8 foot and it's a 2 to 10 gram rod and beautiful light rod with a, with a very sensitive light tip so ideal for this type of fishing but it's also a rod that I sometimes you double up and use it for my mullet fishing and on that I've got a 3000 size lure reel now I know in LRF fishing you can come smaller than that 2500, 2000 or even 1000 but this suits me, it suits my mullet fishing as well so a 3000 size lure reel but that's loaded with just four pound fluorocarbon and it's four pound fluorocarbon all the way through. Now when it comes to the small lures, because I don't do LRF fishing that often, I don't keep a lot of very, very small lures. But what I do have, I've got these and this is what I used when I went out onto the rocks. This is called a red gill dumpy it's two and a half inches long and it weighs just two and a half grams so ideal for that for fishing off the rocks or maybe off of a harbour wall or or where, wherever you wherever you want to fish so that's what i use for the rock fishing but coming into the rock pool i need much smaller lures and like i said i don't keep these lures so so what i do is improvise so sometimes I get these bigger lures, these curly tail lures that sometimes use for um, fishing for bigger fish. So when I get one that gets broken, what I do is just, just cut an inch off the tail like that. And, and the, an inch I found, an inch soft plastic is ideal for the rock pool species. So just cut an inch off, off the end of a curly tail lure. And I found in the past that this works absolutely fine. But the hooks for this tiny little bit of soft plastic have got to be small and what I use is size 12 hooks. But also take down with me some split shot just in case I need a little bit of ex extra weight. And the idea is I put a bit of split shot maybe just above the hook, a bit like a jig head or maybe a few inches away from the hook if I need it. But when it comes to the hook, because this is all strictly catch and release f fishing it's unlikely that I'll catch anything that I want to keep so all strictly catch and release what I did was I crushed the barb down on the hooks and the reason for that is to make it much much easier to get the lure out of the fish's mouth and therefore and do the fish less damage and get it out quicker and get the fish back as soon as possible so I crushed the barbs down on this and also crushed the barb down on the on the small hooks for the tiny little bit of soft plastic for the rock pool fishing. So let's see how I got on a few days ago. Right, so here we are, and it's absolutely beautiful clear water. And what I've got on this mark, I've got lots of little gullies in between rocks that I can drop the lure in. And I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but it's very, very kelpy down there. So hopefully at least there might be some wrasse. So the idea is that I'll spend as much time as I can out here until I get pushed off the rock and then I'm going to make my way back to the shoreline where there is some some lovely rock pools that I'm going to and I'm going to try to catch some of the rock pool species which might be also might be a bit of fun. Right away we go 
Now, sometimes when I've been out uh, to rock marks and you've got clear water like this, and you stand at the water's edge, maybe fishing for other species casting out, you suddenly look down and you can, you often see some really good sized wrasses just, just hiding in the kelp, very, very close to the rock. And if I see that, that that's going to be fun if I actually see a fish and then go for it. But one thing that's great, because the water's so clear, just, the camera probably won't pick it up, but I can, I can see this lure as clear as anything, which is, which is fun. So the idea, we're just going to jig, lower this down and just jig it. Gently jig it and work it down amongst the weed there and close to the rocks and hopefully something will take, take notice and come out and, come out and grab it. I've got a bit of a problem today. Last week we had, even though it was June, we had some horrendous winds for June really strong winds and of course it's it's really stirred things up and there is absolute massive loose kelp on the on the upper shoreline and, and down here I can see on the seabed it's just just piles of loose kelp so I've got to be a little bit careful I'm not I'm not fishing weedless today a little bit careful that I don't uh, get the lure stuck down in that that loose weed well, I've got an absolutely fantastic gully here and so brilliant that it's so clear that I can see right down to the bottom. Not to say that there's any, anything in it, of course, but at least if there is, it'd be, I'll be able to actually see it take the lure and that would be fun. There was a, in this gully here, I was just jigging the lure, lowering the lure into it and jigging it, jigging it down the bottom amongst the weed and then I actually saw the wrasse, the wrasse come out and take the lure which was absolutely fantastic to see. Right, just got to try and get this thing in. Well, that was fun on light tackle, and particularly when it was so it, it's so visual, you can actually see the see the fish. Brilliant! Right, quickly get this unhooked. See if we can get it in a rock pool. Oh, that's really pleasing on such light tackle but I, I did think I did suspect that I might I might get lucky with a decent sized wrasse here at this mark and away it goes yep that's gone away lovely well, that decent sized wrasse completely engulfed this, this tiny little two and a half inch red gill dumpy. But I'm really pleased now that I crushed the barb down because, because the wrasse completely engulfed it. Once I got a hold of the lure, it came out very, very easily. Well, I, I might have had a bit of a struggle. And I mentioned before when I've been fishing for wrasse with normal sort of sized lures, that they're, they're not actually that tough and you, you need to get them back quickly. But because this was barbless, I managed to get the lure out no problem. So definitely a good idea if you've got absolutely no intention of, of keeping the fish, crushing the barbs down. I'm not saying I do it on all, the, all of my lures, 
but crushing the barbs down uh, it makes it much much easier to get the fish back and it just goes to prove that even though this is barbless I had no trouble actually keeping keeping this fish hooked and, and landing it the only problem I did have the the four pound fluorocarbon actually actually snapped as I got the the rast to the to the rocks but fortunately I'd managed to grab hold of it and land it so that was fun particularly as I actually saw the take so we'll carry on now and see what else I can catch One thing I will say about this ultralight fishing, particularly when you've got a chance like I have here of decent sized wrasse, is you can get away with it with such light tackle when you're more or less fishing vertically and fishing at very very close range, just casting the, the lure out. But if I was particularly coming here to target wrasse, uh, I would fish with still light tackle but a lot heavier than this because I would be casting the lure out say 30 40 yards into into rocks and into kelp and then working the lure back now of course if you if you happen to hook a, a ras away from the shore line and it's a decent one you with this sort of tackle you'd have great difficulty actually stopping it diving down in amongst the the rocks and the kelp and you'd probably have trouble trouble landing it uh, and if it does get down stuck down in the kelp you probably have a difficulty getting it out again but when you're fishing at such close range like this and more or less fishing vertically straight down like I am now just running this lure along the edge of the rocks here and at the edge of the weed if you hook one yeah it can still sort of dive in among in back into the rocks or the kelp but you stand on this very light tackle much more chance of, of landing it but um, Personally, I wouldn't I wouldn't dream of fishing so light uh, for my normal normal ras fishing because of that problem problem of maybe la of actually landing the fish uh, when you when you've hooked it say 30 40 yards out in very very rough ground. I've managed to hook another another ras and unfortunately got it stuck at the moment. But hopefully, if I slacken off it might swim out I'm slowly getting pushed off of this rock and coming closer to the shoreline and and as you can see I'm in very very shallow water here but even so and I was just jigging the um, jigging the little lure just running it right along the edge of this rock here and then got the take but unfortunately as is typical with ras fishing I've got it I've got it out there it comes they, um, even when you're fishing with stronger tackle, sometimes they, they take you down into the kelp or into the crevices and you've got a bit of a problem. So I just keep this up and then try and land it. Quite a nice one, not as big as the first one, but what fantastic fun in crystal clear water okay of course I haven't got a net with me I should I should have a net with me really fantastic
Well, once again, because it was, because I had the crushed the barbs down, um, it was fairly easy to get that hook out. Just got it in this pool here, just let it recover a little bit first, and then we'll get it straight back. Yep, seems like it's going to be okay. And it's gone. Well, this is the rock pool that I'm gonna see if I can catch something from. And it's a rock pool that I've used in the past when I've done a bit of filming of lures. Well, there's plenty of life in there. there there's some mullet in there. I don't know if the camera will pick them up swimming around there. Baby mullet, but there's probably no chance of me catching those on a lure. But there's there's gobies in there. I know there's gobies in there. There's probably, probably blennies. And I think, I'm not sure, I think there might be a a bullhead or a rockfish under one of the ledges. I'm not. I'm not sure. So we're going to give it a go and uh, have a bit of fun. And uh, it'd be great if I could just catch just catch one rock pool fish from here. That would that would be good. Right. So I've got my little bit of soft plastic, my little bit of curly tail that I've cut off on a size 12 hook. I'm going to try without any split shot. I don't think I need it. It's quite shallow here and and calm I don't think I need it and try and try and get it looking as, as natural as possible So there you go, those two caught, just with a little bit cut off, an inch cut off from a curly towel, a small hook, and once again I'm grateful that I crushed the barb down on, on this hook, made it much much easier to hung, unhook the fish and get it back. Well, how about that? Well, I can tell you what this reminds me of. Oh, we got another one. This reminds me of when I was a very young kid. I used to do a bit of course fishing and in those days we had there was lots of of uh, farm wild farm ponds and 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 streams that ran through the farm and you used to go down and and basically just fish for minnows or 
or if it was the farm ponds, sticklebacks and, and things like that. And, and, to, and, it, and as a kid, it was a, a lot of fun. So for kids that want to get into, into fishing, then I would recommend this. It could get them complete, completely hooked and it's, and it's so, such great fun when you can actually see the fish as well. And yeah, that's what we used to do. We used to, in the streams, and in the stream, streams, the prize, the old, the wild farm streams, and I'm talking tiny little streams. There was a, a fish, I think it was similar to, to the, what they call the rock fish in the rock, the sea rock pools. I think it was called a bull, a bull something. If you could catch one of those. But what we used to do, we used to go down with, sometimes we only used to have a, a, a stick and a bit of line and a, and a twig as a float or a or a matchstick as a, as a float and fish for them that way and of course later on we ended up with used to have fishing rods so yeah with with my mates we used to absolutely love it this this type of thing and the, that type of fishing and it certainly got me hooked on fishing and then progressing obviously to better things but that's exactly what this reminds me of that type of fishing when I was a very, very, very young lad. A lot of fun. Well that's it, I've had my ultralight fishing, LRF fishing fun and I'm not saying I would do this on a regular basis but sure, a couple of times a year when you've got fantastic weather like this and it's calm season, I particularly enjoyed it when I can actually see the fish when it's clear water and I can see the lure and, and see the, the fish actually take the lure and sure this rock, rock pool fishing would be great fun for kids if you want to get your kids introduced to fishing in a simple way you find yourself a rock pool like this and all you need is as I say you don't need to get too complicated about it just cut off well you can buy buy tiny little lures you only want for the rock pool I would say any lures are about a, an inch long and small hooks but you can just cut off the end of a of a curly tail lure that that that, that has had it and and as you can as you saw there they really go for it so yeah I've had, a, have, I've had a lot of fun in the sun so once again I hope you find that useful and many many thanks for watching